Hi, this is Leah Myers from Myers Design Studio, and today is another episode of What's Happening in the Studio. And this week, I'm just going to talk about last week's block, The Ship of Dreams, and it has four names. It was called The Ship, uh, The Mayflower from the Kansas City Star, and also Tad Lincoln's Sailboat. And evidently, Tad Lincoln was Abraham Lincoln's youngest son, and uh, and that was super interesting. I just googled it. It's you know no, there. It's just an interesting history of the quilt block, and so from there I thought, what, what, uh, like historically, some of the quilt blocks that we look we see and that are common and have four names. And the reason is a lot of these blocks were passed around uh, from friend to friend and quilt, they would get together quilting bees, you know, together and they would have a, a group of women, most commonly on a frame that either hung from the ceiling or that would be like on a chair, on the backs of chairs and they would like quilt together and they would hand quilt rocking that, that needle back and forth up and down, which I'm never doing, I'm not going to hand quilt anything. I really appreciate you guys that do, <laughs> but I like machines and I, I have, uh, I have to quilt really quickly. So and I'm not quick with my hands. I'm quicker with machines. Anyway, I digress, but yes, yeah, so quilt blocks and their histories. And the reason why we don't really know some of the quilt blocks and who actually made them like historically is because it was it was kind of just passed around word of mouth um you know you visit a new place you'd see a quilt on someone's bed and say oh i want to make that you know that sort of thing it was just word of mouth passed down so finding out some of these quilt blocks and where they're actually created who created them the very old antique ones it's it's kind of hard but anyway that's that's what i'm using as an older antique type blocks because I sew on vintage sewing machines, right? So it fits kind of. Yeah. And I'm also using uh, in the segment is, um, uh, I'm going to do like just scraps, things that I have that are scraps from other projects. And, um, anyway, so that I, I just kind of went down the rabbit hole. Where do, where does these do these quilt blocks originate? And, Pretty much that was the answer. It was all passed down word of mouth. So anyway, and I find it's interesting. I'm going to next week, um, I, I have a quilt block uh, set up and it's called uh, the, it, I adapted this quilt block. Uh, it's originally called flying fish. I'm just going to call it fish or swimming fish or something. And, um, but it's adapted from the flying fish block. And there's only one name for that one, just one. And it's a simple block too. It does get a little more technical. And since it's going to be tiny, tiny piecing, because we're using as a small a scrap as I can <laughs> to make this quilt block, um, it, it, we're going to not, it's not going to be half square triangles. It'll be quarter square, um, quarter square block, little block. Anyway. Also, I've also gone back and I started trimming the rainstorm quilt, which you've seen. And I'll put a picture up there of the episode that I did on the rainstorm quilt. I'm doing the binding. Uh, binding. And um, I also thought it would be interesting for you guys to know how I do my binding. Um, the way I do binding is I get an app out. I think it's the Robert Kaufman app. You can get it. I use an iPhone, so it's you can download it on the iPhone. And I use the binding uh, calculator for that because at the uh, see I've done all this math and I've done you know I've done all this work with for the quilt. When it comes to the binding, I just want it quick. You know, I don't want to. I'm I'm no longer in computer mode, math mode, or whatever. I just want the app to tell me how many pieces of binding or uh, strips to cut and then I cut them and then I put them around the quilt and then I'm done. 
because <laughs> by the time I'm done with, I like to bind. Some people don't like binding. I like all the process of quilting. I like the piecing. I, I when I first began, I liked the quilting more, but I kind of like all of it. I like all of the process. I do all the process myself, and I also do the labels as well. And I used to do the labels like straight, like on a square in a corner. Now I do a diagonal label in the corner so that I don't have, all I have to do is whip stitch one seam instead of a two seams. But anyway, I will start binding this and I'll calculate it on my Robert Kaufman app and I'll put a little spiel down here so you can see the, the name of the app. You might download that. It also has other things on there like piece counts and all this other information. Nope, they're not paying me for this. I'm just telling you what I'm using what I use personally because at the very end when I'm getting ready for the binding I no longer want to think anymore I just want to get it done because that's the that's the done part and um, I stitch the top of the binding on and then I whip stitch by hand in the back because I want it to look really neat at that point if it's a if it's a placemat or a coffee or a coaster or something like that I will I will do do the binding all by by machine. Anyway, that's the last. That's the last thing I want to talk about. Uh, I hope you guys have a safe weekend, and I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.